coming up next. In the war-troubled Congo, churches organize a mission of peace. Welcome to this edition of Christian World News. I'm Wendy Griffith. And I'm Dale Hurd. George Thomas is on assignment. Continuing violence in the Congo has changed the focus of a Christian agency caring for orphaned and displaced children. Compassion International says it's no longer sponsoring individual children there, but instead providing emergency relief for entire families. Yet as the crisis continues, there are some signs of hope. Churches recently came together in the northern city of Kisangani in a major effort to promote reconciliation and peace. Stan Jeter has that report. Bullet holes and shattered windows testify to the violence that's shaken this city in the heart of Africa. On the streets of Kisangani, life goes on, but with some changes, like the way drivers buy gasoline. But a much deeper change lies below the surface in the damaged emotions of Kisangani's residents. Because of the war they have been going through war after war, they were desperate, disappointed, hopeless, and they're wounded in their hearts. So they were really hungry and thirsty for the word of God. The hunger for good news could explain the enthusiastic welcome last month when Texas evangelist Sammy Tippett arrived for a series of Christian meetings. For three days, the crowds poured into Kisangani Stadium. Some traveled down the Congo River to get there. Others came by bike. Even political and military leaders arrived. For the city's Christians, it was a celebration of unity and a time to help many find peace with God. This city has been a long time abandoned, forsaken. But this, by this crusade, the city has been comforted. When Sammy Tipit talked about the love of God, he showed to them that Jesus God loves the people of Kisangani. And this is a very big message of comfort. And the churches of Kisangani are praying that thousands of people reconciled to God during three days of meetings will soon be reconciled to their neighbors as well. And for a nation that's tried unsuccessfully to stop the cycle of violence, Christians hope this event will point the way to a lasting peace. Stan Jeter, Christian World News. Tippett reports that over 18,000 people prayed to receive Christ during the three days of meetings in the Congo. I'm standing here right now in the center of Africa. And behind me, you will see an island back there that when it was discovered was called Kisangani. And right here in this very beautiful location is where many people fish on the Congo River. And they are catching fish. But God sent us here to the city called Kisangani to fish for the souls of men. Really didn't know what to expect. God has blessed us here in Kenya. We've had a wonderful evangelistic meeting. We've just concluded. We've seen over 9,000 people who prayed to receive Christ. And now we're getting on a plane to head deep into the interior of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. We're going into an area that is controlled by the rebels, and uh, we're expecting great meetings there at Kisangani. I don't know what's going to happen, but we're leaving right now from Nairobi and looking forward to God doing great and mighty things. As our plane was getting ready to descend, the pilot came on and said, there's something happening at the airport. We may have to circle the airport. We really didn't know what was going on. But were we surprised when we arrived at the airport? We were shocked when we arrived. When I got off the plane, there was my dear friend Joseph Karasanyi right there to meet me, but with him, were about 1,000 believers who had gathered to greet us and to welcome us to the airport and to Kisangani. I've never been greeted by 1,000 people anywhere. A band was playing, people were singing, they were dancing. And then we got into a car and we began to ride through the city. 
And oh my, what an experience that parade was. As we rode through the city, there were people on the streets waving and cheering, and they were dancing and singing with joy because good news had come from afar. It was an exciting moment to see the people, not just the church people, but the people on the streets, the people in the markets, singing and dancing and rejoicing over what God was about to do in the city of Kisangani. From the parade, we were taken to a press conference. There was radio and television coverage, and we just sensed that God was getting ready to do a mighty work in the midst of this war-torn land. We believed that God wanted to bring peace to the hearts of the people. Peace with God and peace with their fellow man. So right after the press conference, we then went and met with the vice governor of the region. And oh, what a blessing it was. He said that even though there had been some opposition, that we would be able to have the stadium and the pastors begin to cheer and shout over that statement and hearing that.